Welcome to the MKM mod demonstration video. In this video, I will showcase different mods uh, items that will come with the MKM mod itself. In this first uh, part of the video, I will showcase some minor things. For example, we have the color wand over here, which you can use to turn any of these black items, basically plastic flooring, walls, doorways, and windows and such, all in the color uh, of your pleasing. You can also use them on these lights, which will be shown all later in the video. You can also use them for these colorable pipes, also later in the video. Basically everything, including uh, two of the automation chips that are most popular, will be shown in the video itself. Um, the second display I will keep away in this video, and the entire reason is that basically it should explain itself. If not, you can use the specialized um, IC chip for it. Let me take a look where it is. There it is. The segment calculator. Uh, simply send it a one and it will show one on the segment display using the output in the middle. So um, that's a thing. In this video, I will showcase the quick pad which I'm gonna purchase, as well as this nice card that a lot of people uh, seems to like really very much. So let me just purchase these two. Let me put this one on the, on the, on the card. Let me drive away towards the outside. This card is basically the same as any other card in the game. The only uh, specialized thing is that it um, is in front of you. First of all, most it fits more items than a normal card, and it's a little bit, a little bit faster than a normal card. This teleporter is basically a thing you put down, and when you place it down and it's placed, you can stand on it and it will teleport you to your shop. So um, let me teleport, put the teleporter somewhere near, on one of the plots I own. For example, over here, I already have one, if I'm correct. But I can also place another one. And when you stand on it, it teleports you back to the entrance of the MKEA store. So it's a very easy way to get back to the main store and the rest of the shopping district over here. And these cards are pretty, pretty quick. You can use them for all items and you can go pretty fast because if I um, walk, Normally, uh, this is my speed, and if I take this card, I'm going a little bit faster than just normal walking, and I can carry a lot of stuff at once. So that's, that's a nice thing. It also has a very nice cornering angle. So it's fast, it's agile, and it has everything you can think of for quickly putting stuff from A to B. So those are the two main items in this uh, first part of the video. Uh, what I also want to mention is that everything over here in the store is being expanded a lot. A lot of new items being added every time. So this is nowhere near the end, but there are a lot of unique stuff that you can find in the, uh, in the store. So let's get on with the video. Welcome to this small demonstration of the MCG colorable walls, floors, fences, etc, etc. Um, these things that are colorable, um, we also have a big load of manual building walls and such in all types of different styles from industrial to glass to gold. Everything is basically there. For example, we have a glass wall over here. You can look through it and you can place it down anywhere you wish for. So we have a lot of different styles, but these are the most special one. Um, since this is now completely black and if I want to I can color them so let me just um, take a, a nice color and for example this one green and I can click on them and I can paint them as I wish you have the big floor tiles the small floor tiles you have walls you have windows in the store I did not set up a window over here but you have them um, you can color them as you wish and make the building as you ever want to believe in the nice thing about these ones is that you can color them as you wish. 
and they remember their color after restart. And you can make them, if you want to make them a certain color, you can. And also in a very nice thing is that the lights are also colorable. So if I turn them in a different color, I can, I can make them blue, I can make them black. Let me just grab right um, for the building. Let me turn the light down to um, night. And as you can see, the colors are now dependent on the light. So I can turn them into purple and for example, orange red, and you can make very nice colorful bases. We also have this power lights that you can change color off. As you can see, I can turn it into literally every color you can think of. Uh, you can always use black for the lights to make them turned off. Just so like decoration. So if I turn black, there is no light anymore. Uh, while if I use purple, the light goes back. We have those nice ornaments to display. We also have these wall lights. And we also have ceiling lights, which are currently here. I can also turn them any color I wish for. It just depends on what you want to make of it. Uh, every light is rotatable in literally every direction. So you can always rotate them as you wish. Keep in mind these ceiling lights are made for on a wall. So they only work on the back side of walls or the bottom side of floors, for example. Um, so if you use them on any other type of wall, for example, this wall over here, um, since it's made on the outer axis, um, you will take note that when I place it down, it will float a little bit off the wall because it's made to be fit onto a wall. So if you take a flat wall on a flat side, um, normally over here, but if I, for example, made a, a floor over here that didn't have, have those, uh -huh. those other things, then it will show up. So you can put them there. Um, Beside that, uh, you can put them on ceilings, floors, and same counts, by the way, for pretty much every other light. You can make it as weird as you wish for. Um, the small walls, for example, are also rotatable in every direction. Uh, same for the floors, you can rotate them as you wish, so you can even use smooth walling using these panels. Um, basically everything in my plugin is rotatable with the exception of these walls since these are uh, expensive walls and they need to make in a certain way same for the doorways you can only place them in the horizontal direction to prevent issues and glitching anyways um, that's it for the colorable wand and walls and lights welcome to the small demonstration information for the mcg color pipes t2 mk2 and the paid intakes so let me take a look over here these pipes are green by default and when you reload the game and they will be black when you just spawn them in or purchase them they will be green and as soon as you reload the game they will be black the reason for this one they are colorable so in the Nkia store you will find this uh, wand that you can with right click change of color. In this case for example red, I can paint them red. Now what does this mean? This means that only red will give water to red or to any tier 1 and 2 normal pipes. So if I turn this one into let me say greenish yellow, then there will be no water flow between them because they are a different color. But if they are all, for example, these types of green, they will all flow through. This way you can separate belts with different styles or different way of tactics. For example, if I do this one, give it a little bit of a bluish color, you can see that the water will flow through there, but it will not never go this way. This way you can make pipes close to each other without them converting. If you want a junction, you can use a T1 or T2 pipe between them. Keep in mind, these pipes are made for a very high pressure. And the normal T1 and T2 do not support that high pressure and will cause splashes when the pressure becomes too high. So, let's go on. The normal hooks and such can all be connected to these pipes. Uh, however, a valve will never work. It will never stop the line when you use a valve. 
uh, reason for that one is I do not want to have high pressure being blocked in any way. Since the blocking is already being done by recoloring a pipe, I don't see the need for it as well. So when I go to, um, uh, when I get some money, I have a thousand bucks here. We have three pipes over here. Let me turn it to day for a moment. There we go. Um, we have three pipes over here. This T1, Mark 2, Mark 3. Simple as that. Mark 1 has a normal output of 300 pressure. This one goes higher and this one goes to up to 500 pressure out of the pipe. You can see the difference between those two by looking at the knots on the bottom. This one is fully green and this one has blue knots on the bottom and a little bit of a change of color. Like this one is green and this one also has silver and blue in there. So when you click on it with, uh, with money, it will take the money away and will charge up until you have nothing on money left. Um, the higher the tier of pipe, the more it costs and the less you get back from it. As simple as it is. So if you take a look at this one, I put money in there and everything is flowing water out. Except for this last one, because it's a different color than this line, as you can see. It will not pass through water here. Well, if I take this away, it does flow. So that's basically how these pipes work and the automatic the paid intakes. These intakes also work as normal intakes uh, by putting them in water. So they give higher pressure out without needing any payment. So if I put them in the water over here, it should work like normal. However, in this case, you can place them literally everywhere and you can pay them for the time remain and it will tick down on the side. Uh, you can put unlimited amount of money in there, so you can uh, put as much in there as you uh, wish for. This was the instruction demonstration of the covered pipes and intakes. Welcome to the small demonstration and instructions for the uh, logic lights modification inside the MKM mod. Over here we have the uh, the hook set up. The cables work exactly the same, with exception of this one, because it's only available in uh, the normal hook version. So let me take a look on how it works. It basically receives a zero, one, or two input, depending on which hook you have. You also have the repair hook that goes to 100. It's a durability reader. So normally you send out the durability reader signal to this one, and it will automatically turn on the light on the status of the um, the damage. So in this case, let's take a look. We have the normal green, yellow, and on the end here, the red one. These take a zero for off and a one for on on that color of the uh, light bulb on the thing. So in this case, it will turn red when it's one. This one turn yellow and this one turn green when it's a one. So let me send a one signal over here. And as you can see here, uh, the one signal is sent and it turns green, yellow, and in the end, red. Um, this last repair hook will turn on and off when it's lower than 10 um, as a blinking signal when it's almost dead. So that's the why it will turn off during this video. The one also means that it will show uh, a yellow bulb onto this, uh, this end uh, line over here. And a one over here will mean that it's green with the stoplight. One is green. If I go over to zero, most lights turn off with exception of this one over here. This is, since it's a three color light, zero means red. And for this one, zero means red as well. Zero red, red one is green. And in this case, zero red, one yellow, two green. So if I send a two signal over here, let me clear it and send two. You can see all lights turned off with exception of the repair and the tree color. Because two is green, so it will show green and this one will turn it down. So let me go into the 50% mode for the damage reader. As you can see, it turns yellow because it's 50 damage. But when I 50% uh, alive and when I turn into 90, it's green, as you can see. Since the status will update to the color depending on. And since the durability reader pulses every second what the damage value is, it will change color automatically due to the line. So this is the small demonstration for the 
logic light hooks. Welcome to a very small video instruction tutorial on how to use the furnace, the Outer Smelter IC chip. I've made an example setup over here, showcasing a small setup that I made just along the way. There are a few things to note here. You can put whatever design you like. Um, basically, I did set it up as small as I can think of right now, but it can be smaller. It's just depending on how you do it. You can even make an entire battery of smelters working with one IC controller. So um, that's worth noticing. Anyways, over here we have the counter, which is very hard um, to remember, but many people use the weight reader. It's possible to use the weight reader, but it sometimes go over the limit uh, using the weight reader because it's counting up more than one per tick. Um, so that there is a possible that it glitches out due to that, especially on very low settings. When clicking on the IC chip, you can change the um, the IC cable. You can change the limit when it triggers. In this case, I've set it to one, and um, when it's 100, it will trigger automatically. There is a little bit of an overflow depending on how many belts you have after the uh, the counter. So you can move the counter forward and the magnet one forward if you want to, but. Uh, to make it more clear, but anyways, when it reaches 100, it will uh, first off send a pulse all the way up here, turning the magnet to one, making sure that nothing goes into it anymore. Um, and it will keep it at one as long as the smelter is busy uh, making a bar. So in this case, I will wait a few seconds, uh, so you will know what I'm talking about. As soon as it reaches 100, like now, the magnet turns on, uh, the smelter triggers and makes a bar, and when the smelter is reset, the magnet is disabled and everything falls in it again. But even it also resets the counter using the same input as the magnet itself. Um, then you have the secondary line over here that goes straight to the counter's output so that the chip will know how much is in there. It will always showcase how much uh, it's received as signal, uh, to where the goal is. The IC chip I always place on top, you can do it in any orientation on the chip, but it looks be the best look is when you put it like this on the, on the chip itself. So um, then you know how it works. Um, yeah, this is basically how it works. I, you do not need this, this hook, by the way, you can do it without. I use it to debug my builds, but this is how it works, and if you wonder how this is powered, it's using uh, my paid pipes. More explanation in a separate uh, separate video about that one. Or a separate uh, chapter in this video, by the way. Um, yeah, that's the outer smelter. Just like the outer smelter, the outer compressor has also the same type of mechanical system in I've made it set up with onyx crystals right now, but anyways, when you sort enough, you can get it the same way. The main input goes into the uh, compressor, and you have a side output here that comes from the counter that's counting up. I've set the limit to 100 over here, and as soon as it reaches 100, it will stop the belt, and then compresses and then restart the belt again. So take a look, it disables the belt, then compresses, and then restarts the belt. There's a little bit of delay between because some people complained about the uh, compressor sometimes taking longer than other times. I think it's just due to lag due to the amount of items in the, in the area, but one second more or less is not a problem. Uh, the B output goes into the reset of the counter as well as in the valve output that goes to your belts that go to the um, compressor. Same way as the furnace, you can use an inverter hook in order to use, for example, a magnet instead of the valve. But this is an example of the valve, and you can also use a valve with the furnace if you want. But yeah, well, you can do it with a valve as well. And if the signal is inverted, simply place an inverter hook before the valve and it works. And it's pretty much flawless every time. I have not have any problem with it. There are methods to get the items out of the compressor again. Uh, I did not make that. So in this case, this is a very small example of an auto compressor that keeps on compressing gems to prevent a very big clock happening up in the end for many people that have a lot of lag. So that's the uh, auto compressor IC chip in action. Up to the next one.
Welcome to this very special new addition. This is the last uh, addition that I uh, made into the mod. When this video goes live, it's either already released or it's still in the release phase. Anyways, um, this is the uh, specialized, uh, yeah, the Ultima drill to be exact. It's not just a normal drill. Uh, I have no idea why my fly mode is bugging out, but anyways, this is a hook. You might not not know, but this is a hook, and what it does is it creates dirt from high pressure of water. So when I put it on, um, it hooks onto the belt. However, um, if I do it, for example, on this pipe, it will not work. Reason? It must be a MK2 pipe. Just so you know, it has three inputs and outputs. So we have the left over here, we have the right over here, and we have an input on the front, and the water flows through on the other side, um, as well as a crane output on the north side. So what does this do? Well, if, let's first take a look at the front side. You see Logic Channel 1. Uh, when you click on it, you can change the channel up to channel 20. And then it goes back to one. Uh, the status you have, where it says that there's something's wrong, it will show you. And it will have uh, this over here, will show you required pressure, the, the tier of the dirt that comes out and the size of the dirt that comes out. Uh, it will show it on the front and you can upgrade it using these upgrade kits. So in this case, it's called an Udo kit. And when you click on it with the Udo kit, it uses them, you hear a sound, you will not see anything until it gets water, then it will update the screen, show MK2 with a higher specs. It will require more pressure as uh, soon as you require, uh, put in more of these stuff. So let me get some coin, so I can start up the system. Uh, as you can see, MK2 is now on screen. It requires 320 pressure. The tier is zero, and the size is one. So in this case, you can see over here, it's making dirt, size one. And if I go onto the thing, you can see that it weighs five. So the uh -huh. weight of these types of things will change eventually as well. Let me clear the dark things. It also sends out a signal on every time it gets water with the color to get somewhere else. So the status is on top of here on the light. However, if you want, you can move the light somewhere else and show the status on any of the control rooms, for example. Same control room, yet you can control these types of things. Since it's channel one, I need a signal of one to turn it off and send a reset the signal to turn it on again. So if I pull the lever, it send a one signal, it goes to orange. And as you can see here, it's orange now, as well as that it will not make dirt anymore. So if I remove the dirt chunks now, uh, there is no dirt being put out because it's halted. When I want to, I can uh, turn the lever off, nothing happens. When I do it again, it starts again, because you need to resend the same signal again to turn it on again. Beside the fact that anything you send in on the front will also exit on the side, so if you make a battery of these things, you simply have to do uh, two yes, swirls with a cable and you send it in on one side and it will poke through all the way to the end so you do not need to separate the line to put it in. Basically the output is also the input. So in this case I send a signal in here, it goes through the machine and exit to the left. And on the right will always change on color. There is also the red status and that's when you have too low pressure to run. Um, that's worth noticing. And when this is on a different channel than I send, so if I turn it to two and pull the lever, nothing happens. Reason, it's channel two. So I need to send it two over the network in order for it to reply. So if I have this machine and then two machines to the left, it's on channel two, and I send a two channel into this machine and use the output here to go to the other machine, then the other machine will turn off because I will send a signal of two or one. Depending on which channel it is, it will trigger. So if I send it to turn 13 and I send a signal of 1, nothing happens. However, if I send a signal of 13 to the system, it will uh, turn it off. So that's how the signaling works. I have a little bit too much dirt here. There you go. Um, so in this case, I pull the lever. 
it will hold the system, but you can also see that it sends the one out over here. But when I turn it back to zero, even when it's halted, it will send the signal zero back out. This system is amazing. If I pick, pick this one up and replace this for the max tier um, machine right now, which is halted, I can literally turn it on again. And if I take it on the other side, you can see that the chunks are way bigger, but they are also way heavier. They weigh 80 a piece. Um, and when you turn it into, for example, this one, a lot of ores come out at once. And since it's tier two, you can also see that plutonium comes out. All those things will eventually come out. It's amazing how, how it works. It basically outputs dirt every second. So it's faster than the normal drills, but it, it will take pressure. So let me pause this for a moment. Um, it's tier two and it's a size eight and it requires 480 pressure, which is basically the max tier uh, paid intake. Um, it requires it and it will take away, uh, I believe 45 or 65 pressure at once. So the next one in this line that will receive water from this output over here um, will have some problems. <laughs> it will not, um, not work anymore because there is already a lot of pressure loss so you need to increase the pressure or use an up, a separate intake for every of those machines in order for it to keep on having the uh, the pressure like you want it to be so it is expensive to run but it is also very rewarding to run at all that is the new ultima drill example Thanks for watching this was a demonstration video. Hopefully you would like the uh, the entire store and its products and I hope for you to um, use it in your projects, visiting your projects and more on Hydroneer. If you have suggestions for any of my uh, modules that are already in the plugin, leave them in the suggestions box on my uh, workshop page. If you have custom ideas for IC chips, same thing, make a topic in the suggestions box stating um, you want a certain IC chip. Keep in mind, IC chips are pre-programmed chips. They do not add new um, items to the game. They are basically pre-programmed entire circuitry. Um, I got some requests for a custom functionality like a pipe with 10 exits uh, that work or extended uh, pipes, um, they are not IC chips. IC chips are things that are taking in logic, do something with the logic and output it uh, somewhere else. So that's a difference over here. So thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next one. Good luck.